Mac Voices is supported by iChart Magazine, putting Apple and tech news in focus. Subscribe in iTunes or find out more at iChartMag.com. Welcome to the Mac Jury on Mac Voices. This is a talk of the Mac community. I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, we have a great Mac jury tonight, great set of panelists to discuss Apple's announcements, because, of course, that's the hot news and that's what we do. Let's first meet the panel, and then we'll get on to everything that Apple uh, showed us today. Going from left to right on my screen, first up, Mr. Bart Bouchotts. Bart, it's great to have you. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks a million. Thanks for the invite. It's uh, nice to join this. I feel like there should be like someone in a wig or with a little gavel or something. Yes. It's for the jury, but... You know, I used to have a gavel, but I have a glass desk, so I <laughs> oh, I, I, I put it away. <laughs> After breaking yeah. it three times. Yeah. yeah I'd love to see that video, actually. Suddenly the, the whole camera goes... Vroom. Yeah. <laughs> didn't seem like a good idea. And, of course, you uh, you stayed up late. You're in Ireland, so I really appreciate you taking the time to uh, do that and losing a little sleep for us. Yeah, it's my pleasure. I'm a night owl anyway. Right. So where can folks find you? That's uh, always something we want to do right at the start of the show. Well, the easiest thing, because no one can spell my surname, so bartb.ie has links to all the stuff I do, and that, people can't spell that. Great. But you do have a couple podcasts going. Yeah, so I do Let's Talk Apple, which is a monthly show, and Let's Talk Photography, which is a different monthly show. And then I show up on the Nacilla cast from time to time. Great. Well, thanks for being here. Yeah, my pleasure. Also staying up late for us across the pond from me, Mr. Don McAllister. Don, it's great to see you. Thanks for being here, as always. Oh, thanks, Chuck. Thanks for the invite. It's, it's been a while, actually. It's been a while. You keep having these late night sessions, which are a little bit too late for me. But this is, you know, I think you've arranged this one slightly early for us Europeans so we can uh, partake. But no, it's good. Always good to be here. Yeah, we, we've got to get this whole time zone thing fixed. I know. I know. Just a flat planet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Internet time. Yeah. So, Don, uh, everyone knows you from Screencast Online, but I, I think you have one or two other projects going. Uh, still mainly screencastonline.com for the for the weekly tutorials. I uh, have the magazine as well over on Newsstand, the Screencast Online monthly magazine, and uh, a new thing which I'm going to have to revamp now because they've just relaunched all iWork, so I'm going to have to redo all the tutorials for iWork. But there's a thing called Screencast Online Academy uh, where I'm sort of uh, putting together blocks of tutorials, and there's currently one there for iWork, but as I say, I'll, I'll have to uh, get back to it and uh, revamp them now we've got new iWork. Yeah, yeah. Because you it's didn't always have, the case. Yeah, you didn't have anything else to do. No, 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 no. It's always it keeps me, you know, keeps me going. All this new software that comes out all the time. Yeah. <laughs> the fourth member of our happy little band, Bob Doctor Maclevitis. Bob, it's great to have you. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having me, Chuck. I know it's a busy day for you. It's been a busy day <laughs> with all the with all the Apple stuff and uh, all the things that I've got, all the balls I've got in the air. Yep. Busy, yeah. busy, busy, busy. Busy, busy. Um, so uh, the Houston Chronicle, yes, I believe, is still your. I guess your is that your main outlet, or do you no. have others? No, I have. I have another outlet. I, I haven't really announced it because I just started. But for the past couple of weeks, I've been writing a weekly column for the Mac Observer again, and I'm very happy to be back. And uh, I think we're going to continue. I didn't want to say anything until we were sure it was, you know, everybody was happy. But it seems to be working. I've been having a lot of fun. It's called Dr. Max Rants and Raves. And I think uh, I've written three or four of them so far. They come out I, Tuesday or Wednesday of each week. So that's my other new gig. And I've been working on the books. You know, I write the same book every year. I, iPhone for dummies. iPad for dummies. <laughs> And a cat or a national park for dummies, you know. Yeah. I just update, update, update. Good. Well, that's, that's great. It's great to have you back on the Mac Observer. It's nice to be back. Yeah. So, guys, we had uh, a bunch of announcements from Apple today. Um, I, I guess, you know, we'll kind of take it from the top um, with the iPad, the new iPads. And I'm really anxious to see what your reaction is, too, to the iPad Air 2 and the iPad Mini 3. Um, Don, how about if we start with you? Yeah, um, quite impressed with the specs on the the new iPad Air two, um, which looks you know a nice piece of kit. 
not sure whether or not they needed to really slim it down because it was quite thin enough as far as I was concerned. But they do like to make these things thinner and thinner and thinner. But um, yeah, the specs look fantastic, you know, and the increase in performance, um, the new sort of display, uh, although it's the same resolution, but they've changed the display so that it's more, um, how did they put it? It's, it's more it's more touchable, I think they said. Um, and, you know, the, the new processor makes it faster. So yeah, it's, it ticks all the boxes. And Touch ID is something, you know, that uh, I think was a given really this time around. Uh, not as impressed with the iPad Mini 3 because they don't really seem to have changed very much um, other than put Touch ID on and hack the price up a little bit. So that's a little bit disappointing. But um, yeah, now that I've got the iPhone uh, 6 Plus, I'll, I wasn't going to go for the Mini anyway. It was going to be the full-size iPad I was going to go with. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm quite happy with the, uh, the new iPad Air 2 anyway. Do you, is this going to be a must-buy for you, Don? You know, it's not really a must-buy because um, I've really been pleasantly surprised at just how um, how much I've been using the, the the six plus, and I was sort of debating whether or not I actually needed to buy a new iPad. But I think with the Touch ID, I'm so used to the Touch ID um, that you know it will be a nice addition to that particular uh, device. So it's it's definitely not a, a must-buy, but you know, I, I normally buy one of the the latest iPads when they come out anyway. Just get hands on to review it and uh, just to see how it fits in with the uh, the rest of the ecosystem um and of course that's what to, he tells uh, his wife yeah you know, well it's <laughs> and then and there's the old you know the, the passing on of the, the devices down the chain as well which always happens right. so uh, you know yeah so it's definitely my not family a must buy. encouraged me to get new ipads <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so bob what is what is apple's obsession with thin that seems to be their thin big is thing in. Haven't you heard? Zen is in. Pretty soon we're going to shave with these the devices. The Cupertino diet. <laughs> no. Um, you know, well, they want to make sure that you can bend it well. <laughs> oh, and it's got to be thin to be bent. I don't know. You know, thin, here's the thing. I think um, thin in, in luxury goods equates to high quality. You know, you got a real thin watch. That's the expensive one because it's hard to do good stuff in small packages. And Apple's showing off, you know. Look how thin ours is compared to the next guys because we can. Yeah. Because well, we own the factories and we make the software and, you know. I What's think, interesting, yeah. though, is, is is that it seems to um, that they've they've made it thinner, but they haven't reduced the weight by a significant amount. So they've actually taken all the air out, basically. Well, um, I bet they've been <laughs> <fixed> <laughs> batteries weigh a lot. Ouch! They probably used whatever space they could reclaim for batter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, by the way, I am very impressed with my iPhone Six Plus's battery. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. like a whole new world for me. I don't have to carry a battery around in my pocket just in case all day. Mm -hmm. I make it all the way till dinner time now. Bart, I'm surprised neither one of these gentlemen mentioned the uh, the camera. And knowing that you're a photography guy, I would think that the camera would be one of the first things you paid attention to. Well, I, I think it's what they gave in the iPhone, isn't it? For, I can't seem so to figure out how the camera's different. Uh, it's, it's, well, the, the point I wanted to make, actually, was that I got the exact opposite of what I wanted from the two events put together. I wanted my iPhone to stay the same size and my iPad to get bigger. And I got no choice but to get a bigger <laughs> iPhone and no choice to get a bigger iPad. So, I know, but yeah, no, the camera looks great. And it was interesting, actually, that they sort of made the point of, you know, people used to scoff at people for using the iPad as a camera, but you know something? It's a great viewfinder. Mm. And he's kind of right. It is, you look at what Ansel Adams if you don't used. Mind, if you don't mind looking like a dork, because when you shoot with an iPad, you look really dorky. Trust me. Yeah, you used to look dorky if you had white earbuds, and then everyone got white earbuds, and then the problem went away. And, and you know, Ansel Adams had a giant camera and it worked for him. I think you still look dorky out in public shooting pictures <laughs> with a 12 inch device. I think there are going to be a lot Maybe. more people doing it, though, because there I, are. you know, I agree with the viewfinder thing. But now with this camera combined with the display, the larger display, we I, saw them everywhere on the geek mm -hmm. cruise. I mean, tourists are big on iPad photography. They're always lugging their iPads around, taking pictures. You can tell who's the tourists in town. They're the ones standing there holding a thing in front of their face. That's how they see the town. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I put a tweet out before because there's quite a lot of uh, of comment on, on on Twitter during the event of, of people, you know, not really in, not really liking people taking photos with their iPad. And I sent a tweet, and I did get a few responses about that. Most people are irritated by the fact that the, if they're standing behind them, they actually block the view because yeah. these people are in front. You know, yes, which is yeah, which is 
Valid, I would have but... seen the Queen of England if it weren't for the guy with the <laughs> iPad in front of me. But I saw her on his iPad screen. Oh, well, there you That's go. okay, then. Yeah, that works. I... That's true, too, that whole thing about getting in the way. Mm. I especially hate people who bring an iPad to a concert. Yes. I want to... Yeah, I, I agree. Maybe we need new, new etiquette. Yeah, I think they yeah. should be shot. <laughs> Not quite the etiquette I had in mind, but it would yeah. work. <laughs> yeah. Solve the problem anyway. Cruel but fair. No, I, I tell you, I can see. I mean, I just know what my experience has been with my iPad, or excuse me, my iPhone 6 Plus um, with, the, with the slow motion. And I can just see, I, before I could see every single coach in the world for any sport buying one of these. Now, I, it would, it's, it's the air. I mean, why wouldn't you buy the air? Because then you're going to be able to look at it on that beautiful yeah. big screen right there. Yeah. As far as teaching and, and coaching, it's just got to be phenomenal. I actually wonder, because we all thought it was a bit odd when the iPhone 6 had the sticky outy camera. But does that camera, is it not just the exact size of this new iPad? Because it doesn't stick out here. It only sticks out on the iPhone. Yeah. I'm wondering yeah. if it's like the identical unit that they just went, mm, it doesn't quite fit in the iPhone, but oh well. I wonder if it's the yeah. same sensor. or the. I don't know. That yeah. sticky outiness doesn't bother me. It only <laughs> sticks out like a fingernail's worth. It's It barely sticks out. Calling that sticking out is... Yeah, okay. It's, it's a yeah. disservice to sticking out. <laughs> Fair point. But it's a feature because it stops the back from getting scratched because the, the if you lay it down flat... <laughs> wait, yeah, it hang on, Don. Hang on. on. As a photographer here, sacrificing oh, your lens to save your body is not the right approach. <laughs> it's made out of... Uh, Exotic sapphire or something. Yeah, you can't scratch That's it. It's okay. Sensor. I'll give it a go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Going in completely You've different lost direction. control. Yeah, well, I never had it with this group. <laughs> One thing that did surprise me, I felt like the, the there were a couple things about the iPad Mini 3. One of which is it just seems to get such short shrift. It just, oh, yeah, oh. and we're updating the iPad Mini 3. Wait, and did they say something about it in the event? It was very quick. I it was very quick. And I missed it. Yeah. I think I went and got a glass of water, and when I came back, they were already off to the iMac. It, it, it was just when they were putting up the stats, wasn't it? Here's the price of this one. Oh, yeah, we won one of these two. Next. Oh, yeah. yeah. But it, it but is I actually the. Because I looked at, in the iBook store and I saw what yeah. they're next. <laughs> Yeah, no, but it is exactly the same as the iPad 2. Uh, even the networking, it's still AC. Uh, sorry, no, it's still um, 802.11n. It's um, you know the same processor. They haven't upgraded the processor. It's the same display. Uh, the only the only new thing I, th I think is just Touch ID has been added in, and they've bumped up the price by a hundred dollars. So, I mean, it's still a nice machine, but I you know I would have expected them to have updated the specs in line with the iPad Air 2. Well, I guess. It's it's sort of like the the whole iPhone situation. They're obviously pushing you toward the higher price model. I mean, there's no question about that. I was just a little surprised that there seems to be still such a gap between the two, given the how popular the iPad Mini seems to be with so many people. I'm, just, I'm wondering if the iPad Mini perhaps is now taking a uh, lesser of a role now that they've got the bigger phones. Whether not it's you know Apple's direction now is not to focus too much on the mini iPads and push people more towards the, the larger size phone and then the full size iPad and then in the future even larger iPads. You know, you know. Certainly, it's that way for me. Uh, before I got the six plus, I used the iPad Mini a lot because mm -hmm. it's the right size for reading and it was great for surfing the web without having to hold yeah. something in two hands. I mean, convenient in one hand. Well, my i my iPhone six plus that screen is so good. I can read things with the same amount of, of text on screen mm -hmm. on the smaller display just fine. So I find my iPad mini is probably going to be the next thing I sell off because I really don't need it. The things I used to do on that I can do on my iPhone 6 Plus, and I still have a, a full-size fourth, fourth generation, but now I want an Air. So it's yeah. not See, a must-buy for me, but I will replace the fourth generation with an Air one of these days. The thing with me, when I when I got the Mini, the intention was, well, I had the full-size iPad, and, and that was great, but it wasn't portable. I, I'd never take it out of the house because it just, yeah, it just right. didn't fit in. And then the iPhone was too small to read things on, and it, it, was, it was okay, but it was, you know, I always felt limited with the iPhone screen size, and I thought, right, the Mini's going to be great because that'll be the device that I'll be able to take out with me. And I got it, and I loved it, and I, I used it a lot, but again, I never took it out of the house. It's just, it's just Even though it was a smaller size, it, it was never portable enough. Whereas the six plus 
is is perfect. It actually fits in the pocket. Yeah, yeah, it's great. You know, it's it's and and it's so the screen is fantastic. It's um, amazing, isn't it? Yeah, you can really, read really uh, all, all the reading. I I travel with the iPad Mini, and it's perfect for reading on an airplane or in a hotel room. It doesn't weigh much. It's easy to throw in the backpack. Doesn't take up much space, and, and the full size iPads are like for the home. I don't think any of yeah. them has ever been out of the house except to take to a demo where I'm showing people something on the full-size iPad. But but the Mini was my take it out and, and about iPad, and now I don't need it anymore. It's like I haven't used it in weeks because I've done every, all that stuff on my phone and happily. Mm -hmm. it's not, there's no sacrifice, no trade-off, I don't think. See, that's interesting because I had sold my Mini a, a, a while back. Um, and I, I think that was the original Mini. I didn't upgrade to the Retina because I, I just found that I still had to carry it no matter what. So I might as well carry the, the Air and the full-size iPad, now the Air, and get the extra screen real estate, get all the benefits, and not have that in-between device. So I don't know. Well, the in-between device, when, when, I, when I took my backpack – if I was going somewhere mm -hmm. and taking a backpack or a shoulder bag or something like that, it went with me. It never went in my pocket. So yeah. the iPhone 6 has got the added advantage of I can have it all the time without having to carry an extra piece of luggage or something. Yeah. That's well, kind of how I looked at the Mini was it goes in the travel bag, and the big one sits on the coffee table at home. It never leaves the house. It's funny because it, my coffee table has a MacBook Pro in it permanently. Because the iPad just means I don't take the laptop with me anymore. <laughs> I'm probably never. I'm probably never going to replace this MacBook Pro. It's probably the last laptop I buy, and that's kind of why I was hoping, twelve, maybe thirteen inch iPad. That would be the perfect laptop replacement, and then I'd be very happy. But well, rumor happen. rumor has it you're getting your wish next year. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. Well, rumor. You know. Has. You know about those rumors. Yeah. You know how well, they... that TV. When am I getting that? <laughs> Yeah, Next year. that's a whole other discussion. Apple TV? <laughs> oh, yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? How come no Apple TV? Mm. I, you I know, know. I've, I wondered if, and this is pure speculation, I just wondered if that could have gotten pulled at the last minute, given the Comcast and CBS announcements today. Because we, and the HBO announcement. Or, yeah, I'm sorry. I, yeah, I said Comcast. I meant HBO, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, just the, the idea that, could that the cable, the cable operators are in trouble because these guys have just fired the first volley. They've just said, you know what? We don't need a middleman to get money out of the consumer. We can sell our stuff direct to them, and they'll pay us the same they pay you, except we'll keep it all. And, and you know, HBO being the first one out of the gate to say it, you know now that everybody's going there. And the thing is, they'll probably make more money. Because I'm ready to, I'm ready to go uh, wireless or cable free. I'm ready to. When I move, I'm not getting cable. I'm just not going to do it. I think I can get everything I need over there, um, either in the iTunes store or on my Apple TV. My cable bill's ridiculous. It's, it's <laughs> gross. Whose isn't? Bart. Um you know, the, the other thing that they showed off, of course, was the, the they talked a lot about the new processor, um, but they showed it off editing photos. And again, I kind of mm. default to you because you're a photo guy. Did you think that was as exciting and interesting as I did? It it was pretty impressive in terms of the photo was cool. And I like, you know, that he created something pretty pretty just with a few drags of his finger, the little spinny thing for changing the opacity and stuff it was all pretty cool. Nicely done. But I, I remain to be convinced that real photographers can do very much with the iPad because there is no way for me to color correct that thing. And I'm, I, am a, I, I love my photographs to have rich, vibrant color. And if you have rich, vibrant color that's not accurate, it looks gaudy and awful. And so I will never edit a photo on a screen I can't color correct. And I was having this rant with Alison Sheridan earlier, and she said, well, hang on a second. The photos are in sync, so can't you do a basic edit on the iPad? Let them sync over to your Mac and tweak them on the Mac. And I was like, oh, hang on. Yes, actually, I could. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's a triage device where you can do an awful lot in the field, mm -hmm. give them the finishing polish when you get home, and then publish them. So yeah, could, but what really blew my socks off was the video stuff. Like, yeah. the stuff they were doing in real time was, wow. And this is not a Mac Pro. This is a skinny, teeny, tiny tablet. That, that was amazing. Yeah, there's, there's a big part of the picture that we've yet to see, though, which is the, uh, the iCloud library 
which is going to come out in public beta in eight, uh, iOS ISO 8.1. Uh, 8 and that's going to be fantastic because I've actually already had a play with that. And to have um, a central library where all your photos are and then any device can actually access that central library and you can uh, make a change on one device and it will be replicated to the center and then replicated back out to the other devices. Um, I mean, I've found the iPad to be great for, um, you know, I've, I've got one of those little um, SD card readers that I just plug into the iPad. But at the moment, b before the iCloud library, it was it was such a mess because it, you know you'd get, end up with different copies of of different photos everywhere. But with the iCloud photo library, that's going to take all that complication away. And I think then um, you know photo editing on the iPad does become viable because you are triaging on on the iPad, and then you know the central yeah. copy is held somewhere else. You can go in and, and revert back to the original even if you want to. And it looked on like that was going to be this the same for videos as well. Yeah, it is for videos as well. Yeah. It's just, so you know, central repository for all your digital images and video. And if, if that works as well as, as they we would like it to, I mean, mm -hmm. that'll, that'll change everything because I know that it's one thing to store photos. It's a whole other one to store video because of the I size. already upgraded my iCloud to 200 <laughs> yeah. gigabytes. Yeah, same here. Just for starters, you know. It's like <laughs> I know I'm going to be using a lot of space up there, certainly more than the five free. So oh, yeah, that, yeah. that one terabyte I think they talked about a few months ago. It was, it was one terabyte they talked about last month, wasn't it? You could buy if you spend enough for it. Like, yeah. $99 a, a yeah. month or something. I thought that was nuts, ridiculous. No. Who could ever want it? And if you're going to start putting all my video up there, yeah, okay, maybe I could use a terabyte. Yeah. I don't remember the price, but mine's mine's only like uh, $3.99 a month or something. Yeah. For yeah, I'm on the same one. It actually gave me money back because I was on that yes. one. Yes. Yeah. I, was was cool. I was on the 25 yeah. Which was forty bucks a year, I think. So I, I yeah. actually got a little cheaper and more storage. Yeah, I, I got, I got. I think it was ten euro. I got back. Well, I'll take it. Yeah. So Bart, are you, are you going to do an upgrade, or are you going to hold out for the uh, mythical larger iPad? I have a four. I'm happy with it. I'm, I'm staying, but I wasn't expecting to move. In fact, I'm staying on my iPhone five as well. I, I wasn't really expecting much from either of this month's events that would make me part with my money. I, I'm going to get the Apple Watch, and I'm going to be really happy with that. And that'll be my fun thing for the year. Okay, good. Um, last thing on the, on the watch. I, what, Bob? I want to watch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> last thing on the iPads. The one thing I was really surprised, and I understand why they did it, because the the original iPad Mini is clocking in now at two forty nine. Um, so they, they really have a wide range of prices. At the same time, that's three iPad minis in, in, the, in the product line and an iPad Air. And then, of course, you have the, all the variations on colors. You have the variations on storage. It just seemed like an awful lot of SKUs. Uh, they, yeah, I think it's a good idea, though, because Apple owns the retail channel they sell it through. So the SKUs isn't a problem for them. And, and because of that, you now have that range of options based on what your what your budget will allow. For a lot of people, two hundred and fifty bucks for the cheapest iPad you can get is way better than what they'd get spending two hundred and fifty bucks elsewhere. Yeah, it's kind of and awfully I, confusing though. Well, I think it is to some extent, but I, I think if you go into an Apple store to shop, those guys. I just wrote a column about it. The service there is great. You can believe what they tell you. They're not lying. If you ask a question, they'll either answer honestly or they won't, or they find someone else to answer it. But they won't make stuff up and they won't sell you what you don't need. If you tell them what you need, they'll try to sell you exactly what'll do it. And, and so you know, I, I think it's not really a problem. So there's well, hang on, but the there's, there's, there's a lot of countries that don't have that luxury. There is not a single Apple store in the Republic of Ireland. It is just not an option for Irish people. Really? Yeah, not a one. There's one in Belfast where I can go spend the pound sterling I don't have because I have euros. There is not a single one in the Republic of Ireland. So, oh, yeah, that's I keep terrible. expecting a Dublin store, right? I want to be on that keynote with people running up with silly T-shirts. I can be in the video. Yeah, It just doesn't happen. <laughs> you know, I, I, did, think, I didn't notice that. Yeah. When I was in Ireland, I, I didn't notice that there were no Apple stores. I just assumed they, they were there, they were you, there yeah. but I missed them. <laughs> yeah, you would assume they were, but no, not a one. Well, okay, I, I think um, the tech-savvy people won't have a problem with it, but for the regular consumer, without the ability to walk in the store and get someone to tell them why, I think if you look online, it is confusing, because they look the same, but they're more expensive, more and even more expensive. Yeah. 
Right. Yeah, but I think Bob's hit the, the nail on the head there, though, is that there's the tech-savvy people like us who understand that there are these diff- this, this wide range of iPads, all with different specs and different processors and different capabilities. Mm-hmm. Although in real life, you know, the... Uh, you you find an Apple run on every single model of the iPad, and uh, it might run faster on others, but not on others. So I think really that they're targeting the the normal people who just want to you know they want to buy an iPad, and they've got you know they've got this many dollars. Yeah, right. they've got two hundred quid, they've got three hundred quid, they've got four hundred quid, or you know they they want it. Well, I just want the basic model, so they can actually base it on the price point rather than you know the actual spec because the specs are, are totally confusing to to most uh, people who aren't. You know, interested in the actual field, so you know they've just they've just started to open it up to give people as wide a range of price points as possible. Plus, that's what people like us are around for. You know, <laughs> everybody you know that's going to make that decision is going to come to you and say, "What should I do?" So, you know, they got people like us to make the call for them, to help I them. Can I, can I know I everybody something? in my family before they buy anything, they come to me and go, "Well, what should I get?" Yeah. Oh yeah, we're all yeah. I think we all do that. Did did anyone else find that a mistake that the thirty two went to sixty four, the sixty four to one hundred and twenty eight, and the sixteen is still sixteen? I mean, come on! It takes five gigs to upgrade the OS. Yeah, I you're only going to give people. I, we talked about this on the previous podcast yeah. too. Sixteen is a disservice to the user, and yeah. you can't upgrade it, so you don't know how bad it is till you bought it already. It's yeah. like when you buy it and fill it up in a week. And then you have to play that game where you try to, you know, move stuff off your device. And that's terrible. For And who's going to buy 16s, first-time buyers? Yeah. And the, the people who are looking at the, the Nexus 9 that came out today, if, if Apple had a 32-gig entry model, it would be a no-brainer. You look at the Nexus, you go, oh, that's cute. They've caught up to the previous iPad. But Apple are a step ahead of them again. Whereas now, if someone comes to me and says, I can save $100 and get a Nexus, I'll argue against it, but I'll have a harder time. Well, well I, I, I saw one particular theory, which was that if Apple had made the base, the, the entry model of 32 gigs, so 32, 64, 128, most people would buy the 32. So I'm by, sure they if, have, by sure keeping they it have at 16, results. they can push them to the 64 and get them to go for the for the mid-range model rather than the entry-level model. Yeah, which, they should have gone 24 or something. It, it's 16 is just terrible. Yeah, I agree. And I wonder how much of a difference... I know there's that psychological barrier, but if they'd made the the the, the base model um, two two seventy nine. Well, I was thinking two ninety nine, but yeah, two seventy nine. Two ninety nine is probably too high for that entry level, but two seventy nine with sixteen. I don't know. You could make the case that they they'd be doing a better thing for the user experience that way. Yeah. Well, right. They were very proud of the fact that a hundred percent of people were happy with one of them. If you sell yeah, them a sixteen iPad, gig yeah. one. And then they, they go to upgrade to iOS nine. They will not be happy. <laughs> Sorry, they won't. It's it's, it's not a good experience. No, they're they're letting happen. their customers happy. happy. That's right. Mac Voices is supported by iChart Magazine, putting Apple and tech news in focus. Ken Ray, the brains behind Mac OS Ken, brings you iChart Magazine, a digital only publication distributed through Apple's newsstand, where he delivers more in depth coverage on the Apple news we all crave. Published Monday through Friday, it's the perfect way to get more of Ken's views and analysis on what makes the Apple universe tick. Of course, Ken doesn't stop there. He also covers tech news in general, but with an eye on how it affects you and me as Apple users and enthusiasts. And that's the difference. The iChart Magazine difference. Ken was my guest on Mac Voices 14198 to talk about iChart Magazine, along with Mac OS Ken, iChart Radio, Day6, and what keeps him going. Ken is one of my favorite Apple news junkies because of his unique combination of analysis and wit. iChart Magazine is your way to get his most in-depth coverage of our favorite computer company and everything that affects them. iChart Magazine, putting Apple and tech news in focus. Find out more and subscribe in iTunes and at iChartMag.com. Thanks to iChart Magazine for their support of Mac Voices. Yeah. So let's let's move on to the next machine, um, and that is the new iMac. Wait, next has a new machine. <laughs> I <laughs> set you up for that. that. Uh, um, the new iMac, the new iMac with a 5K display. Uh, Don, I'm going to start with you for. Uh, gee, I don't know why I'd start with you, Don. 
<laughs> yeah, I, um, I mean, we'd, we'd all had the rumours of this new 5K display coming out. I wasn't quite sure whether or not they'd, they'd crack it this time around or uh, whether or not you know, it'd take them a bit longer to, uh, to pull it out of the bag. But no, they have done. Uh, they've had to develop some custom chipsets to actually drive it. Uh, the thing that blew me away, though, really, was the, the price point. They brought it in at um, a price point much less than I thought they would because... Uh, Apple traditionally, you know, the, the, the display tax on Apple products has normally been horrendous. You know, Apple monitors are normally the most expensive. But they've, they've managed to bring in, you know, a 5K display, um, quadruple the pixels of a standard 27-inch um, uh, iMac for, for actually less than what Dell are going to sell just the monitor on its own for. And they've included, you know, a top of the line computer in there as well. So I'm Didn't really Phil impressed. Sure, make that joke. We th we give you a 5K <laughs> display for 24.95, but we throw in a free Mac yeah, with every just, one. Just amazing, you know. So uh, and you know, 4K, 5K is is the way things are going. Um, so you know, I, th I think it's really interesting. It's a pity they didn't bring out the cinema display as well at the same time, but that's probably again a marketing a 5K rock. cinema display. But they don't yeah. have very many machines that. Well, uh, I guess well, the, my, my MacBook Pro could power it because it can yeah. power a 4K. And the well, MacBook Pro, I would imagine. A shiny new cylinder. They, they should be getting that shiny new cylinder 5K goodness. You would think so. You would think so. But Apple never normally go, uh, you know, they, they don't follow the path that you might expect them to, I don't think. But I think so. this is nice to see that Apple is in the, fi the HD space with yeah. a product at least. Mm -hmm. You know, now, yeah. now you can expect more. Oh, the yeah. Cinema yeah. display will be 5K. Yeah, definitely. Don, uh, anything you want to tell us? <laughs> <laughs> Confession time, is it? Well, yeah, I, I, I've been dabbling a lot with 4K video f recently. I got a 4K video camera. Uh, I hadn't taken the plunge to buy a 4K monitor because the, you know, the true 4K monitors are so expensive. But when this came out, I thought, you know, I'll, I'll give it a go. I'll, I'll, so I actually, yeah, got the old credit card one. out. Yeah, I ordered one. Yeah, so when's uh, the ship date? Uh, they're being dispatched within three to five days, which I thought was quite oh, wow. quick. Yeah, uh, and I'm going to try to get one next week. Right, about, about ten to twelve try. days. Yeah, ten to twelve days delivery. So uh, I think around I'm about the twenty seventh. Borrow a 4K camera. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. But okay. it's, I mean, it's, it looks amazing. You know, it looks amazing. And the funny thing is, that the iMac is the Mac. I've never owned an iMac. I've had the you know, Mac Mini. I've got the Mac Pro, and and you know the the laptops. But I never ever uh, had the. the the desire for a for an iMac, but um, yeah, this is finally pushing. Now me I the do. Edge. Now yeah. I do. <laughs> yeah. I my I switched to the iMac years ago, and really, iMac plus iPad, that's mm -hmm. me. I'm happy. You know, mm -hmm. it's such a nice experience. I've I've had the 27 inches for years. I have I have one at work. I have one at home. I have the same big extra Apple keyboard, the same Magic Trackpad. It's just such a nice way to work. Yeah. Now the only disappointment for me though is that uh, on. Um, from the limited amount of research I've been able to do this evening, is that it doesn't look as though you can actually use the iMac as an external monitor. I know the the, the standard iMacs you can um, some sort of target mode that you can set them into, and they become an external monitor. Uh, you can't actually do that with the Retina uh, iMac oh. because it uses this special chip chip set that uh, you know, has the horsepower to actually drive the monitor. So you can't hook it up to another machine. You can only use it as a, um, a standalone. You can use the iMac to drive another 4K monitor, but you can't use the, the iMac itself as an external monitor to another machine, which for Mac Pro users is quite a bind because, you know, I saw quite a few Mac Pro users who wanted to buy one and rip the Mac out of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 2495. Yeah. yeah, I don't need the Mac. Just I'll, I'll just rip it out and use the screen. <laughs> Bob, I thought it was interesting that we didn't hear much. In fact, I'm not even sure. We, I guess we heard something about the processors. Um, you know, this the, the news here was all the screen. Mm -hmm. Is that is that the only thing they could do? I mean, is have we reached that point where the horsepower doesn't mean that much? We have all the horsepower we can stand, so now it's about everything around that? I, I think uh, there hasn't been a real breakthrough in processing and so it's not something they wanted to waste time on. Uh, when, the, when Intel comes out with the next generation of processors with more cores and higher speeds, then you'll hear about it again. But for now, the, all the improvements are really incremental and small, and I, I think it probably was smart of Apple to just kind of not get into that. Because we're not in a horsepower race with IBM anymore. Uh, people just care how it works. 
and what do they, you know, what's the part that they think about the most? What they see. So focusing on on the screen uh, technology and display technology and the pixel count and the smoothness and the, I, I think that might be very smart because really everybody likes visual stuff. Everybody takes pictures. Everybody watches movies. And the fact that, you know, this is something that you know, I, I looked at some uh, 4K TVs that were $8,000, $9,000, you know? So it, this is a bargain. It's a steal. <laughs> and for, four, for four, uh, 4K video people, it's there's nothing else like it. Mm. You'd have to spend five times that to put together a system any other way. Yeah, I, tell, I was so impressed with the, um, the 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 video that they they ran during the keynote, where it showed you the because they they said the next in line of the Retina family or whatever, and then they showed the um, the iPhone and then the iPad and uh, the iPad Mini, the iPad, and then the iMac. It was fantastically done, really really nice piece of video. It only lasted about fifteen seconds, but it was cool, absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Art, you were saying that iPad iMac is like ideal for you as a photographer. Oh, it works, yeah, it works great for me. Well, not just as a photographer. So, you know, photography I do for fun. As a living, I'm a professional nerd. I'm a sysadmin and a programmer. So, what I need is loads of screen real space, a good keyboard, and a good trackpad. And the iMac is such a pleasant way to work because it takes up no space in your desk. You can clutter like crazy. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> You, you yeah, see your office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Mark. <laughs> thanks. I knew that was coming. So, is this going to be something that? I mean, I know there. We all have financial limitations. You'd love to upgrade sure, everything. Sure, the next but, one. Yeah, I mean, I got a. I, I took the plunge last year when they went skinny thin, and so as far as I'm concerned, I have a one year old iMac. My iMacs last three years. I get Apple Care on them. I use them until the Apple Care runs out. Then I sell them and buy another one. So I'm locked in for the next two years. But I rest assured, I am. Very sure that the next time around I'll be going iMac again. I was really happy with what I saw today. Good, good. Yeah, I want one. Well, who doesn't want one? Yeah, I'm just trying to figure. I how want to one of everything. Yeah, I want one. I <laughs> yeah. want one of those little trash can Macs too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, anything else on the before we leave the iMac? It seems like we spent a lot more time on the iPads, but there were I think there was a lot more to talk about here. The big story just was the display. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So does does the Mac Mini count as part of the the Mac discussion, or do you think of moving on to software? I, I, well, I'm, I was going to move on to the Mac Mini actually. Oh. <laughs> um, so thank you for the segue, Bart. What did you think of the Mac Mini, Bart? <laughs> well, I like the I like the price point. Um, we've been a Mac Mini family, so I I've been an iMac person, but my my partner is an i a Mac Mini person and has been. I think the first Mac Mini to come into the house was a G4. Then we had an Intel one, now we have another Intel one, and I'm pretty sure we'll have another one whenever it, whenever it runs out and needs replacing. And it used to be that you pay about €600 Euro to get a Mac Mini that was useful, and then it went up to about 800 at one stage. You need to spend 800 to have a usable machine that had enough RAM to be reasonable. And now we're back down to 700 uh, And you know the, the middle-of-the-range machine that they unveiled today is is a machine I could recommend to everyone. You know, it, It's a good little machine at a fair price. So I, I was happy to see it come back down. It's 100 quid less than I used to say to people, no, you really do have to spend that bit extra. Eight gigs of RAM. Yeah. That, that was, you know, I was expecting to scroll over and find the eight gigs was only in the top model. But no, middle machine, there it is. Enough RAM, enough CPU, one terabyte disk. Good machine. Yeah. I, I looked at it. I, I saw that the top end um, of the stock configuration is nine ninety nine, So that's starting to get a little pricey. But on and the no other hand, i7 option at all it's weird all of them are i5s yeah yeah and so i guess they you know i think they're probably trying to encourage uh creative professionals to go with a more expensive mac Uh, that's what i would think the the mac mini is always a starter mac it was never uh, i would never say or a media media server or a media server Oh, I that too. Yes, people use it as media servers or or server, server, any sort of server. I mean, yeah. you can stack a lot of them in a rack. You know, lovely little things. Yeah, that's true. But yeah, oh, no. Right. I mean, to me, they're a first Mac, right? You have a keyboard, you have a mouse, you have a monitor, you have a, a, a tower. Good way to with, yeah. Good, good way to get it. into the Mac experience yeah. without spending a lot of money. I agree. Yeah, you, you take the Windows gunk, you put it aside, you replace it with a teeny tiny little thing, and away you go. Don, you're being quiet in this. Uh, no, I was just checking because, I, to be honest, I was surprised that you said there was no i7 version because I, I I bought a Mac Mini probably about 18 months ago when, when uh, the MacBook Pro had to go in for a repair. I needed a spare machine, and I actually bought one of the i7 
Mac Minis, and I was absolutely made up with it. The, the performance was fantastic. It was as good as the MacBook Pro at the time. And, they probably uh, uh, are appreciating in value. You might want to. You might yeah, want to yeah, sell no, it while it's. Yeah. I've just I've just logged on to see what it was, and it, it is it is one of the Intel Core i7 machines, and it's a fantastic machine, really good machine. Yeah, I did, I'm surprised I did see, they don't offer any. Well, they do yeah. offer it if you go in as a build to order, but it's an extra two hundred euro. Oh right. Okay. So I'm looking here mm. at a Mac Mini with an i7 for one thousand two hundred and nineteen euro, and I'm sorry, but that's not that, good wait, value. I didn't see that in the America? <laughs> I don't even know if that's available in America. Hold on. Well, I had to click on the biggest one, on the, the most expensive and one already. To order. And then change it to an i7. So really, the prices are ridiculous. I wouldn't recommend that to people. Is the um, I, I did see some comments on Twitter, people complaining that you uh, it, it maxed out at 16 gig. You couldn't actually take it up to 32. Yeah, it, it does. That's correct. And uh, it seems to max out at a one terabyte drive as well. Yes. Right, okay. But that's the Fusion drive, isn't it? Which, are, which are yeah, Well, you can go to one terabyte PCI-based flash storage if you would like to add $800. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps not. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so you can only get the i7 on the top configuration yeah. and wow. only on a build to order and it's 11.99 yeah wow. so so here in euro that's 1219 yeah, yeah that's a very lot. expensive yeah mm. that yeah. this is not a machine for for graphics pros this is a machine yeah. for a family machine a first mac machine or a sticking under the stairs and doing something machine yeah, that's that's where I have my Mac Mini now. But Bart, it's, it's is, nice uh, that they they still you know they've updated them. Um, and it's been so long. That's probably the the tagline as well. I think that was the for the event. You know, that's it's been it's been so long. The uh, the poor Mac Mini's been languishing, really, not having any attention done to it. And it's nice to see that they. Well, I know some people did uh, were expecting a bit of a complete revamp, uh, perhaps a new case design or something. But you know, even if if they've lowered the price and updated the processors with the latest processors and put Thunder, because uh, it's got USB 3 now, it's got Thunderbolt, it's it Thunderbolt 2 in the Mac Mini now as well. Just scrolling through here, Thunderbolt 2 USB 3. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's great. You know, it's 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 the it's the the standard sort of spec that you would expect for a modern machine, a modern Mac these days, and you know, it's coming at a decent price point. And the design doesn't look dated yet. I mean, it, no, it, it doesn't, really, really no. doesn't. And, and the RAM is accessible without needing a squidger, so you know, it, it's a good wee machine. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I was encouraged too because I know there were some, there were people out there that thought that maybe it was going to go away, and it's easy to say, well, that would have made no sense. But at least from where I said, it would have made no sense because it's a versatile little machine. It's a good little machine. It may not be as powerful as you'd like, but at the same time, you know, you don't. Apple doesn't want to cannibalize on the lower end. They do want to push you to the higher end, and mm -hmm. for that kind of price, at the top end of a Mac Mini. Why wouldn't you just go ahead and, and get the bottom end of an iMac with the four with the five K display? It's it's a no well, brainer. no, because it's a big jump between because the iMac five K display starts at two thousand five hundred. But you got to buy a display to go with your Mac Mini, so that exactly. well, you do unless something. you're unless you're upgrading an existing. Yeah, unless setup. that's true. Yeah, that's that's a decent point too. So. Or do you want to talk about software? So I, well, I, I figured we should. <laughs> I, I, I think we're done with the mini, unless anybody else had anything. So nope. Bart, uh, segue to uh, segue. To, you're the segue guy tonight. Uh, Se segue, <laughs> segue to the uh, the software. What what well, impressed you? What impressed me was how everything is. Assuming it works as promised, and I think it will, because my iPhone and my iPad are already dropping calls over and back to each other. And I, I mean, the demo was full of silly humor, but it made a very serious point is that you really, they really have thought about this whole real people walk around from display to display to display and your work should follow you. You know, to me, that is, it's a few years ago now when everyone lost their reason about the fact that the, the Mac was being iPadified. Do you remember this, this phrase? <laughs> oh, sure. And I said, that's rubbish. It's being Star Trekified. And I said that you will get a situation where you can just go from one screen to another and your stuff will be with you. I do believe it has arrived. You know, have you ever seen Picard pick up a pad and then go, oh, sugar, I left that on the screen on the bridge. No, it just works. And <laughs> I think we're there. Do we need to point out that was a TV show, Bart? But it works because I know, they wrote it still. that way. The script said so. <laughs> but, you know, there, there is something to be said for that. And I think Bart's right. You know, that's the, that's the way a lot of us work. And so this would seem to be a natural evolution of the, of the OS. If we haven't hit hit uh, the wall yet and it seemed like there are a lot of ways that they can continue to to go and improve this yeah well it's cooperation it, it shouldn't be ios versus os 10 which some people seem to think oh it's got one's going to destroy the other no this is great what i'm seeing now 
I believe the buzzword is synergy. I don't really know what that means, but I'm sure someone said that somewhere. <laughs> it's a breakfast cereal, synergy. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds like it gives you energy. <laughs> Don, you had said when we started out that you're going to have to update uh, Screencast uh, University oh, yeah. um, for I, I work. Um, mm -hmm. so yes, new versions of iWork uh, are coming out to go with Yosemite, but there'll be lots. I mean, um, you know, lots of vendors will be updating their software to, to go with uh, Yosemite as well and to start using some of the continuity and handover stuff. Um, I mean, Yosemite itself is quite a, a neat upgrade to um you know to what we have now so yeah lots to do you know, lots lots of changes um there doesn't seem to be as much of um i think there was a lot of talk with ios 8 because it was such a radical change I mean, with ios 7 we had the radical change in the in the look and feel and the design and the design but ios 8 you know the functionality has exploded in ios 8 iOS 8. But Yosemite seemed to have been, well, we know it's there. We, we saw all the features back in WWDC and we've sort of been waiting for it to, to hit the, you know, hit the streets. And there doesn't seem to be that sort of um, groundswell of enthusiasm for it. But I think once people start to see it and start to use it, and especially when they start to use the, you know, the continuity features um, and the way the, the both operating systems interact, I think people will be very impressed with this. Uh, it might take a few, you know, point releases to, to settle down and bed down, but uh, they'll get there in the end. The thing I'm hoping with, especially with, with iWorks, Pages and Keynote, um, notably, is that we've had to do this dance about what what could you do with one that you couldn't do with the other and what did mm -hmm. you lose when you moved them back and forth. I'm hoping that's over. We obviously haven't had our hands on this yet, but I'm hoping that's over. Yeah, there's going to. I think there's going to be a little bit of friction with iCloud Drive. Um, you know, when people migrate from standard iCloud to iCloud Drive, there is a, a migration that goes on in the background, and there's bound to be a few hiccups and a few bumps when that happens. Uh, and uh, you know, just a different way of working as well. But yeah, I, I think they, they they did a really smart move. You know, a year ago or however long it was to to get rid of the old versions of iWork and start again from scratch because they've now got a unified platform that they can build on. And, you know, they obviously knew at that point they were going to have the iCloud drive as well. And they knew that the continuity stuff was coming as well. So, you know, they've sort of laid the foundations now for iWork and, uh, and they, they'll just keep building on it and they'll, they'll fill out the features that they had to drop when they actually rewrote the applications. Um, and within, within a year or two, we'll probably see, you know, all those features that have are gone and I'll be a mist. I'll, I'll be back into the new versions. Bob, I think you're like me. I I love Keynote. I love sometimes. I just love to play with it to see what you can do, um, even if you aren't working on a serious presentation. And just a couple little hints that we got from the the, the presentation today made me drool again. I just want to go in and find out what all those new capabilities are and start to incorporate them into my projects. Well, guess what? Yosemite is available now. Yep. It wasn't an hour ago, but it is mm -hmm. right now. I know what I'm doing instead of going to bed. When this I'm, insta I'm installing it. <laughs> while I'm installing it while we podcast. Oh, it's going to restart the computer. Oh, uh -oh. boy. Uh-oh. <laughs> Just kidding. See you later, Bob. I'm not that, I'm not that dumb. <laughs> but I almost clicked install. I saw it, and I'm like, my first Ooh. instinct was, okay, you know, they pay me to be the first one on the block. <laughs> Pull the trigger. <laughs> I, I hope you have backups, Bob, just in it's case. Already run, it's already running on my main machine. Okay. I wrote Yosemite for dummies, so I've had it running on all the machines here for like three months. <laughs> well, oh. actually, since you've been using it and, and, you know, and immersed in it, is, does it take long to get over the fact that it's all gone a bit flat, or is that just a very no. quick change? No, you, you will be used to it in five days or three days. You know, it's just jarring when you first see it. In about a week, you'll forget what it looked like Either before. One. Yeah, you just... You get used to it. In fact, um, I have to look closely to notice now. I have to like mm. you know look at the dock more closely for the photorealistic instead of the flat to know which one I'm running. I got this machine over here is running Maverick still, and this one is running Yosemite. Well it will be interesting to see. Uh, well, I've got it running already on on the Retina MacBook Pro, and uh, you know it really does look nice with the new fonts, etc. Mm -hmm. on the Retina display. It's sort of designed to run on Retina. Yes. So. Yeah, it's really, really I think nice. It's it's a pretty nice. Uh, I I think it's better looking than uh, Mavericks was. I think it's to me that look is is more appealing. It's more stark and plain, and you know not so much frou frou stuff. Although Mavericks was better than before, where it was really cartoony. But I, I I'm I'm a big fan of that very simple look. I like it. Mm -hmm. well, I'm particularly looking forward, actually, to to the menu bar 
sorry, not the menu bar, the title bar on the apps becoming a real part of the UI. Well, not just semi-translucent, but you know the UI features being put up there to slim everything down. I, I, I think that's a sensible use of space. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, when I jump back and forth, I'm lately I've been thinking. I just want to work on Yosemite all the time. You know, I don't want to go back to Mavericks anymore. So that's why all but one machine are now on Yosemite. That's I think a pretty good I think most, Yeah, but uh, for listeners and out there in, in uh, TV land, here's my advice. Let us take the arrows. Pioneers take the <laughs> arrows. You should not be installing a point zero release. Only qualified professionals should have to. I, I don't know that there's anything wrong with is it 10.0 10.10 point 10.10.0 but i i always advise people you don't want to install the 0.0 release because there's bound to be something wrong with it and what if it's something that affects your workflow wait and if there's something like that you'll hear about it on mac observer mac jury wherever wherever you get your mac news but you'll hear about it and once you install it, it's not, it's, I mean, unless you're a carbon copy cloner like me, it's not that easy to just switch back. You can't just reinstall Mavericks. If you didn't do the right thing before, you're not going back. Mm-hmm. So take that with however many grains of salt you wish, listeners, but I advise you not to install Yosemite yet. From the guy who's downloading it as we speak. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but, <laughs> job. That's right. That's my job. Uh yeah, I, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm a little bit like you, Bob. I want to play with it right away, and I'll and I'll download it and install it on a non-production machine. But for my main machine, I, I want to wait until at least for a week or so and see I've if anything jumps up. I've already cleared that the stuff I use every day works. You know, it's mm-hmm. like I know that I can launch and use Microsoft Word. I know that I can use Logic. I know that I can use Aperture or Lightroom, whichever. I, I'm still transitioning. I'm still. I still haven't gotten over the death of Aperture. I, you know that shocked me. Right uh, on the heels of it, MacWorld Expo died. I mean, uh, yeah. when yeah. I went to uh, order the iMac before, they're still selling Aperture. You could actually yeah. buy Aperture to, to, for your iMac, which I thought was crazy. Well, I don't think it's necessarily died. I, I mean, it's still Aperture? out there. Well, I mean, well, we're going to see what happens, right? If this Photos app turns out to be I really thought... good, I won't complain. If. Mm-hmm. Okay, Bob, enough to find. Bob has just left the room. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, Bart, I, I kind of agree with you, but the things I the things I'm seeing from Apple in their own uh, applications, it gives me some optimism, you know. And mm-hmm. I've and I've I've been afraid that people are going to drop Aperture and just run over to Lightroom or run somewhere else, just because you know, oh my God, the sky is falling in a year or two. Well. I, I, I don't think so. I think today we actually saw the photos up because when that photographer with all those screenshots and that shiny iMac, those sliders we could see at the edge of the screen, they were on the mm-hmm. opposite side to Aperture. They were not Aperture sliders. They were also not Lightroom sliders. Oh, he was right. using okay. something we haven't seen yet. That's, and he's a pro photographer and he got nice stuff out. That's an interesting point. <laughs> that's an interesting Sorry, point. Sorry, guys. Someone was pounding on the doorbell. Uh, oh, they, uh, they were de- delivering a new iMac, Bob? No, it was my neighbor. Oh. oh. <laughs> you weren't that loud. I could hear it. <laughs> no, I think he meant you, Bob, as being disturbing the neighbors. Oh yeah, well, that's because I haven't plugged my guitar in yet. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> guys, I guess you know. Overall, I felt like it was a good, solid day. I mean, we did have some leaks ahead of time. Um, we had a lot of rumors and a lot of speculations. So I don't know that there there were any huge surprises. Um, but it felt good. It felt solid. Happily, the video stream this time was no problem at all. Um, I had problems, but I'm not really? sure it was Apple. Yeah, okay. I'm, I, yeah. I'm having network issues in the house, yeah. and I think it's yeah. Time Warner. So well, I'm not going to blame Apple for the fact that I only saw like half of it. Stephen well, Colbert was in it, wasn't he? He was. He was. That was very funny. Yeah, that was that was an interesting um, skit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know there oh, were some... they, they also, they, they, I mean, they they took the piss out of themselves quite well. I mean, especially Tim Cook after the stupid leak in iBooks. Like, I mean, that, that was just such a... You know, the secrecy thing. That was great. That was hilarious. I thought the fact that if he can laugh it's nice himself, that they could make fun of themselves. And you'd never see Microsoft doing something like that, making fun of themselves. Well, they, they, didn't they, they try with that ad with... Seriously. What's that ad with Bill Gates and that pseudo-comedian? 
I mean, they tried uh, to not take themselves oh, seriously. Jerry, Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld? Seinfeld? Yeah. Boy, that, that, that was the biggest good. waste oh, of $10 terrible, million yeah. dollars I ever saw. Yeah. It, it, could have I just think given it to me. I, I could have spent it more wisely. I think they're a bit more relaxed in those smaller venues, though, because there was a definite, um, you know, definite change in their approach. Uh, everyone seemed very relaxed, and it was quite, quite casual and quite informal. Whereas, I think at the Flint Centre, because it was such a big event, oh. um, you know, the people were were under quite a lot of pressure there, and it's, it's just well, a different it was, vibe. That was more like a performance, and that was, this was more like a demo. Yeah, you know, well, the, the it, other was, was a very, very choreographed. But the difference is not Craig Federici, though, because there was no Craig Federici on the other event, and the comedy started when Hair Force One walked out on stage. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, that is when the keynote changed from Tim well, being a little only bit one, He's the only one in the executive team that can even remotely carry that stuff off. I mean, yeah, true, true. And do you those remember guys how aren't exactly, they're, they're not exactly a comedy team of Tim and Phil. No, no, no. I don't know. But, but do you I, remember his first appearance where his hand was shaking so much oh, he could yeah. hardly use the mouse? Yeah. And that's the same guy who was up there today entertaining like a pro. Yeah. And, you know, I thought Eddie Q's appearance in the security video. I liked that. Was, he, I he, was he did good. well. I mean, he did the, good. He yeah. didn't do a lot, but his, his facial expressions were perfect. It was, he was believable. He was better than a lot of actors I've seen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, thought, I thought the Colbert you have thing. have to go back and watch the whole thing. Oh, without, do. without all the yeah. interruptions, because yeah. I, I kept running from screen to screen. One would go out, and I'd go look on the other. I had it on Apple TV, the computer, and the iPad. It's like, oh, that one stalled. <laughs> go watch over here. Yeah. Between it, I saw about eighty percent. I think. Yeah, it, it it was again. It was good. It was solid. I, I am curious about one thing, though. It, and and t please correct me if I'm wrong. I think last year or the year before. Tim, at, at the, their last announcement for the year, kind of said, you know, that, that concludes or that finalizes our product line. Mm -hmm. I didn't hear that this time. I did. Did he, you? He, did? At the very at his intro. He didn't say it at the end. But in his intro, he said, we showed you a bunch of stuff last year, but we're not done yet. Here's some more stuff to round out the year. Okay. Uh, yeah. it, it was very, very, very early on in the keynote before they raced into the iPad. And it it's may October. have been said in a way. We're not getting anything else this year. <laughs> we're done. The, the holiday season rush is over. The, that stuff's already in the channel. And if it's not, it's not coming out till next year because well, there's just no reason to bring something out in November. Well, that's what I would think. But, but I mean, if you can't have it in the stores in November. Yeah. But Bart, if, if he said that, I missed it. So thank you. It, it was just a sentence, but it was like, you know, basically setting it up. You know, we, we, we just saw you a while ago, but we have some more stuff before we're done for the year. And okay. I mean, it, the way he said it was even slightly open to interpretation. But I, what I heard was, this is it for the year. Maybe I'm wrong. No, I, don't no, I think it. you're right. No, you're right. I think you're right. Yeah. I, I don't think there's any more this year. I was just looking for it and I didn't get it. So well, where's I, my I Apple it. TV? <laughs> of all the things that disappointed me was everybody else got a little bump, the iPad, the iMac, the Mac Mini. Everybody got a little love, but my Apple TV. Well, what about Very the poor iPod Touch? Didn't get any love. Wait, no, true. is the iPod Touch still it's... alive? <laughs> I believe it. This is the classic. Yeah, they it killed the classic. It is the iPod, right? <laughs> How about just the iPod period? I, you know, th yeah. th that no the nano, no new nanos this year, no new uh, anything, no shuffles, nothing. Nope. I think the iPod is over because everybody mm. has an iPhone. Yeah, oh, definitely. No, my, my wife still loves her iPod Shuffle, which she uses for uh, audiobooks because it just clips on. It's all solid state. There's no controls, oh. nothing. You know, it's watch, perfect. Right? Yeah, because you're gonna have your watch, watch next. Yeah, you watch, watch it for next year. She's gonna have to start saving her her shekels. <laughs> you go tell her that. Well, Bob. she's not getting one the first year. Nobody in my family gets anything the first year, except me. And then when <laughs> I'm done with it, they get. They, that's right. I just wrote about my cast offs. That's uh. my family loves when I get new hardware. Well, new my partner actually said to me, "Don't you want a new iPad?" Which was a, uh. very, a very, very leading question because it actually meant, "Can I have?" Yeah. Yeah. I my like wife that. said. Don't you want the new iPhone 6 Plus? You do, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, get one, because then I can have your 5S, and, which he's lusted after all year. And Don, who, who in your house is lobbying for you to get new gear? You know, it's 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 funny, but I have to force it on people sometimes, because uh, especially the kids, you know, they're, they're, they're so blasé about it now. You know, I've got to go through the, the rigmarole of 
you know, reloading all my stuff on it again. Oh, <laughs> well, I made that so hard too. You know? So I, yes, I have to say, I erase my iPhones and iPads and restore them about as often as uh, most people change shirts. Mm. I'm serious because I'm always doing it for some reason for a book. I got to have a brand new version and walk through the whole setup process. Yeah. So I erase them and restore them. Like I'm, I'm very cavalier about it. And it couldn't be easier. Yeah, no, it's just easy. I mean, Apple really did make it easy to get a new device. You just basically plug it in and it says, do you want to make it look like the old device? Yes. And okay. when it's done, it does. It's just mind-boggling. Well, it's a good thing that so many apps sync their data to iCloud. Because otherwise, it would, I used to be very scared that what if something gets corrupted and I lose all of my game state and all of the games I've been working so hard on to build up gold or whatever. And now it's just, I don't care. I'll just get a new one and it'll That's be right. fine. That's right. You can always just log in from a different device yeah. and your gold is still there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, important. it's important. Yeah, I was devastated when I thought I lost my real racing progress where I've you know played 78% of the game and I'm at like 230 hours of gameplay. Ouch. Oh. Yeah. Well, I've had it two years, you know. It's like oh, a okay. little every day. You get a bonus if you play every day, so I, I generally will turn it on at least once a day and get the bonus. <laughs> Great game, real racing. I, I need time to do this much kind of cheap, stuff. Much cheaper than buying a sports car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And on, much healthier, too. On that note, guys, thank you so much. Bart, It's it, thank you so much for staying up late. We really appreciate it. Uh, we'll do it again soon. Yeah, my pleasure. I, I, I'll always talk Apple with people. I kind of figured that, yeah. Don, it's it's always a pleasure. I'm sorry it's taken uh, you a little while to get back here, but I'm glad you are, and we have to do it more often as well, definitely. Yeah, no problem. No, I enjoyed it. It's been been good. So, yeah, just whenever you want, just give me a call. All right. You, got, you Be careful what you ask for. <laughs> Bob, what can I say? You, you are the always man. A Thank pleasure. you. Always a pleasure. I'll be back, I hope. Good. We'll all be back. All right. Good to see all. All of you guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is the Mac Jury on Mac Voices. We will be back with more. um, And it won't be with the next Apple announcement. It'll be something else, but I don't know what. Until then, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for links, show notes, to subscribe, to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Subscribe to our weekly newsletter, the Mac Voices Dispatch, to stay up to date on all the latest Mac Voices news from our front page or at macvoices.com slash newsletter. Advertising and sponsorships handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com. <laughs>